Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the River family. Yes, um, we are just blessed to see you guys today. Amen. Um, being one with you in worship and in, lis in listening to, to God's word. And I may request everyone to, to rise, if you may. It's very, it's very nice to always start everything with, with a prayer. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. So Lord, we, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. And we welcome you in this place. Um, we, we might feel restricted, oh God, but Lord, we know that you are here with us um, today. And we just want to thank you for gathering us here, for uniting us, Father God, to, uh, in this place, Father God, to just lift your name and declare um, declare your glory. Thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity uh, that you've given us, the opportunity to sing songs, the opportunity to lift your name, the opportunity, Father God, to, to listen to your word that will serve and will strengthen our spirit and our soul. We just welcome you today, Holy Spirit. We just have your way and we surrender everything to you. Just give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Again, um, welcome to the River family. And the first song that we're going to sing today is entitled Chain Breaker. And <clears throat> so if you feel, if you feel, you know, if you feel imprisoned, if you feel pain, and if you feel um, lost, which I do feel last week, like it's, it's a kind of mix of feeling like tired and lost, but the only um, lesson that I've learned through that you know, feeling that thing is sometimes we just need to declare God's goodness. God is in us. God is in your heart. Amen. Amen. And we just declare that He's good. He's the chain breaker. Amen. Amen. He's our life. And that's, that's the only thing. And it, it gives me life. It gives you know, the life back to me. So I hope that you know, if you feel those things, I hope and I pray that we hope and we pray that you, you would you know, be free from that one. Amen. Hallelujah. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice and the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. You feel lost. He's a way maker. Give him freedom, save him. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We all search for the light of day in the dead of night. We all find ourselves worn out from the same old night. Just ain't right But there's a better life There's a better life You got pain He's a pain taker You feel lost He's a way maker Give him freedom To save him He's a prison shaking savior If you got change He's a chain breaker He's a prison 
You know, God's unstoppable, right? He definitely is. You can't stop him. He's impossible to stop. So he finds a way, he makes a way, right? Yeah. So I just wanna, I wanna pray before we really get into um, the rest of the service. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you make a way. Father, I thank you that you break chains. Father, I thank you that you make change in us, Father. So today, I just pray, change our hearts today, Father. You, you, you already brought the Holy Spirit in uh, just to minister to us, even as we were sitting there just listening in worship. You were already changing something. Father, I just pray to continue to stir that through the day, through the rest of the week, through the rest of this year, Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being present. And Father, I just pray, open our hearts and our ears to what you have for us today. Father, too, I just pray as, uh, you know, we're 
and the Philippines is being bombarded right now. Father, I just pray for comfort and a peace and a supernatural presence in that place right now, that people come to know you, right? And that something happens there, that they see you there. I just pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Right. So yeah, welcome to our service online and present here, right? Uh, next week will look a little different. We're all going to be masked. I'm not going to say gagged. We're going to say masked, right? Because I think that's what the devil is trying to do is put a gag on us. Right? And it does not work. Right? Yeah, so anyway... How many of you guys like receiving gifts? Of course we do, right? You know, gifts come in all shapes, sizes, even different ways, right? Each one of you is a gift, right? You know, and when we give gifts to people, right, we like to give a best gift, do we not? Right? We want to give the best gift, right? If it's a wedding for a wedding or for a birthday or whatever, even just a gift as a reminder that, hey, you're valuable to me. We want to give a, a, a gift that means something to that person, right? Usually, right? Because you know them, right? It's like, oh, I, I seen this today and this just, just spoke to me because this is part of your personality, right? Or part of who you are. Right? And they, they do. We love giving amazing gifts, right? Because it's a reflection of usually the person that you're giving the gift to. Right? It's a token of love and appreciation, right? But you see, it's not really for the sake of the return of the gift, right? It's the act of love of giving a gift. So, we've been talking about, uh, we've been diving into the supernatural. And today, supernatural came down, right? I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> it's nice. It's awesome. So, we've been diving into that. And we're going to talk today. So, I ask permission to teach you guys today a little bit more. I know last week I taught. I did some teaching. Right? Because really what the supernatural is is when heaven hits the earth. We pray your kingdom come, your will be done. Right? And then when it happens, it's like, whoa! Right? Sometimes we need that. We talked about that last week a bit. Sometimes we need to have that shaking and the quaking and everything like that to wake us up and to make us move. Right? And to stir our hearts. And sometimes we get fearful of that, as we shared. Right? So today we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit because God gives the best gift, right? And I have a sermon on that. Uh, you know, we, we did that one time. I said, you know, the gifts, right? And of course, around Christmas time, the best gift is Jesus, right? And you, and you see, we're to receive those supernatural gifts, Right? If they remain unopened, it's not really a gift. It's just something given that we don't actually receive. Right? You see, the gifts of the Spirit, they're supernatural endowments. Right? Given to the believer at the direction of the Holy Spirit to meet particular needs at particular times. We need to remember that. Right? You see, we cannot receive gifts that we're not intended to receive, but we can desire certain gifts, indicating that we can receive gifts of the Spirit that may fulfill the desire of our hearts while still fulfilling God's purpose for them. You see, the Holy Spirit's going to give whatever gift is needed to minister to different circumstances. So let's examine what these gifts are, right? what their intended use is for the church today. So I want to dive right in. So, all right. Okay. Let's go. 1 Corinthians 12, 
1 through 11. Right away. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You see, right off the bat, here's our first line. Paul wants it to make very sure that these gifts are crystal clear. So we will not, so we'll depend on the inspired word of God to reveal them. Right? So let's jump. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. So let's look at verse 4. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Verse 5. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God. You see, there's three, there's three types of gifts. And three people distribute them. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Right? Which is all the same. So let's go back to this part here in verse 4 through 6. Right? So Paul tells us that there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Right? So these are the gifts that are given by the Holy Spirit. And they're called manifestation gifts. Okay? Manifestation gifts means shining forth. Okay? So here's our triune God at work. Right? And now let's go verse 7. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, which these are manifestation gifts. So verse 8, it says, to one, we'll just keep going, we'll go from 8 to 11. To one, there's given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still another, the interpretation of tongues. And all of these are work of the one and the same Spirit as he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So let's look at verse 4. Go back. We're going to keep this up here. We're going to go back and forth. We have need to understand this. Right? Paul tells us that there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Verse 7. Not, no two gifts are the same. And generally, no two believers have exactly the same gifts. But the same Spirit. Right? And the gifts are given for the common good of the church. So there's nine gifts that he mentions there. Right? These nine gifts are the ways in which the indwelling spirit shines forth or reveals or manifests himself through believers. So these gifts, they're all supernatural in nature, in character. Right? And so these nine gifts are broken into three categories. So there's three revelation gifts, which means that God reveals something. There's three utterance gifts, which means that God says something. There's three power gifts, which manifests whenever the Holy Spirit wants to. Right? So we have, what did they say? First one is word of wisdom. That's a revelation gift. There's the word of knowledge, also a revelation gift. 
And I'm going to break these down just a little bit. I just want to kind of rip through them a little bit. Faith is a power gift. Gifts of healing is a power gift. Working in miracles, power gift. Prophecy, utterance gift. Right? A discerning of spirits is a revelation gift. A diverse or different kind of tongues is an utterance gift. An interpretation of those tongues is an utterance gift. Right? So let's jump. And I'm going to, we're going to go through a lot. So I'm going to hopefully, you know, hopefully we won't get too, too bogged down. But so let's look at the gift of wisdom. Right? Doesn't mean that we're wise in ourselves. The gift of wisdom is a supernatural application of knowledge. And it's knowing the divine course of action to be taken in regard to the natural or supernatural knowledge, knowledge that God has given you. It's proper judgment for action. And it's, it's mentioned first, the gift of wisdom, be perhaps because it is a foundation to the church. Right? And this gift would, that the believer can earnestly desire. We all need wisdom, right? Wisdom is clearly taught in the Word of God in Psalm 111, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And all who follow its precepts have good understanding. And wisdom is also associated with fearing the Lord. And guys, fearing the Lord is simply remaining in awe of him, understanding he is everything, right? With reverence and respect. It entails loving his word and being obedient to what it says. And there's no wisdom in disobedience. And that means for some members as are revering God's laws and statutes, including loving God and loving your neighbor. And many members in the church can have this gift. Right? So the gift of knowledge, right? The, the word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation of facts. Okay? So it's not just, it's not filling your head with stuff. It's, it's all of, it's, what did we say that it was? It's a revelation gift. You'll see this a lot with prophets or prophetic people where they can say, you know, I could... You know, I don't know anybody in this room. Well, I do. I mean, but, but what I mean is, you know, I can actually pick out your address, your social insurance number, all of these things because God gives you that word of knowledge. Or sometimes he'll give you an exact word for a specific time, right? Like right out of scripture is like this speaks exactly here, right? Right? And so it is. It, it's a knowledge, the revelation of facts, past, present, or a future, right? Which were, were not learned or developed through the efforts of the natural mind, right? So it's not from just reading all of these things. It's, it comes supernaturally, right? And it might be described as the mind of Christ being imparted to the mind of the believer, right? And it is. It's given by revelation for a moment in time. So the gift of faith, so the next gift is that is the spirit that Paul mentions is the gift of faith. And those with this gift are truly amazing in how they see things. The gift of faith can be defined as small portions of God's total faith given to a believer applied to a specific situation. Right? People of faith tend to exude confidence in all situations. Right? This, is a this is a person more like God. He sees things that, they, that aren't as if they already are. Right? And then there's the gift of healing. Right? So there's two parts to this. So the gifts of healing is one of the ways that God's made provision for his people to receive healing for the body. And there's several ways in which people can receive healing. The second part of that is that the gifts of healing are supernatural impartations of the ability of God to bring healing to an individual in an instant of time. And it's often accompanied with the gift of faith. 
See, this gift was more prominent in New Testament church to confirm that Jesus, his, his name had power and that God was working in the church. You see, we must attribute any healing that is done by one spirit and not by humans. Right? And we talked a bit about this a little bit ago, but the gift of miracles is known as the working of miracles or the impartation of divine ability or power to perform the impossible. Okay? So the gift of miraculous powers is another gift that appears to be unique in the New Testament church. The greatest miracles today, for the most part, is the miracle of human conversion, which means bringing people to Christ. Okay? That's the greatest miracle of all because since the only, only the Spirit of God can illuminate the Word of God and reveal to us who Jesus Christ is. And then next week, you know, there's the gift of prophecy. Okay? Which, I, you know, we have somebody else coming to teach, but I'm just going to give you like an outline of this, right? So the next gift is prophecy, and it's the supernatural ability to receive a message initiated by God and the grace to speak it forth. Right? And sometimes it's a forthtelling. That's a declarative aspect of prophecy where God delivers a message of edification, exhortation, and comfort to his people. And then there's a foretelling, which is a predictive aspect of prophecy where God delivers a message that involves prediction of future events. Right? And it's a, it's a principal expression resulting from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the entire church age. Right? Prophecy is for the purpose of establishing, strengthening, and comforting the local church. It's not for tearing down the church. It's for grow, building the church. Right? And next week, you know, um, God, God willing, you know, Todd's going to teach us how to hear the Holy Spirit. And the gift of discernment, so that's the seventh one that Paul talks about, is one of God's answers to dealing with the world of evil spirits. Right? It's the one way which God guards and protects his people. Right? So the gift of distinguishing between spirits is not to be confused with having the gift of discernment. Okay? This discernment is keenness in judgment or insight. That's what that one is. Okay? It's the ability to perceive what is actually taking place in a given situation and separate the good from the bad. Discernment is a wonderful quality, and it usually grows as we grow in wisdom and understanding. You see, the discerning of spirits is the supernatural ability to God to identify the spirit behind an activity and the authority to deal with that. The gift of tongues, right? It's distinguished from other aspects of tongues in the New Testament. Right? So the next gift Right? So that's the ability to be able to speak in different tongues. Acts 2, uh, verse 4, it says, They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages. Right? So tongues is the evidence. So this is Acts, comes from Acts 10, 44 to 45. All believers who are baptized in the Holy Spirit receive the evidence of speaking with other tongues. This experience is maintained in the believer's life as prayer language for the purpose of communication with God. Tongues as the gift, 1 Corinthians 12.10. The Holy Spirit, gift of tongues as a manifestation of spirit, can operate through any believer at the discretion of the Holy Spirit as a temporary endowment to meet a specific need at a specific time. So I'll give you an example. So if I'm in China, I don't speak Chinese. I, sp I try to. But if I'm there and the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, for me to minister to this person, the Holy Spirit will give me the language that they speak in so we can communicate or the ability for me to hear 
that part. Right? You see, the, the, the tongue, it may be the tongue of, or language of men, or it may be the tongue or language of angels, which is your prayer language. And then the next is the gift of interpretation of tongues. So that was what I was explaining there too, is if I was in China and I heard them, I could hear what they're saying, even though I don't understand. Right? So the gift of interpretation tongues is a God-given ability to understand and interpret a message from a language that is not known by the person who's doing the interpretation. You see, this gift is someone who is able to interpret another tongue or language. And if anyone was speaking in tongues in the church, there absolutely had to be someone there to interpret or they were to be silent. Right? And then the other part of that was that there was no, there was no more than one person who was speaking in tongues at one time unless there was an interpreter. Right? So, so let's go back to verse 5. It says, There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. You see, Jesus our Lord gives these to the church. These are ministry gifts for the church. Sometimes you'll hear that. It is the fivefold. All right? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. RG? <laughs> you know, the fivefold. We joke about the give somebody the fivefold slap, but these are not titles, they are functions in the church. Right? They're offices given to the church by Jesus. Ephesians 4.11, it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. And I'm not going to go into extensively into these descriptions, but it's important that God places these offices into the ministry to move the church. I will, I will just briefly go what each one is, because some people don't know, right? But So it's really interesting. So apostles, let's look at our hands. So apostles is your thumb, right? They exist, and they're still called by God to carry out a mission of growing the church. Often we hear a lot of churches do not use this anymore. They don't classify that we're apostles anymore because apostles were in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, but they're not for this age anymore, right? Apostles are church planters. They go out and they, church, they plant churches. That's more what the, the office is for today is church planting, right? It's clearly listed, right, as the first in a series, right? Just as in Jesus' day, not everyone will receive this gift. As God continues to grow the church, there will always be a need for this gifting. The second one is prophets, right? And prophets, I'm going to use... uh, an illustration, right? Prophets are the ones that, like, hey, you, <laughs> they call you out. They, they, they start speaking to you, right? And sometimes it makes us feel uncomfortable, right? So prophet is this one, right? But you see, the prophet proclaimed the message, give it to him as a seer beheld the vision of God, right? Thus a prophet was a spokesman for God, He spoke in God's name and by his authority. He is the mouth by which God speaks to men. And hence, what the prophet says is not of man, but of God. Prophets were the immediate organs for God for the communication of his mind and will to men. Next one is evangelist. I'm not turning my hand around. (laughs) Okay? Evangelists, right? are those who are unusually supernaturally gifted at sharing the gospel with the lost or preaching, teaching, reaching the lost to build up the body of Christ. 
Sometimes there's a reason why the middle finger is a bit bigger, because sometimes the evangelist is bigger than life. Right? That's kind of a jokey thing, but sometimes they are, right? But that's what they're called to do. Right? Then there's the pastor. Right? The pastor. Here, I'll do that. I can't even do it. There. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I can't even get my fingers to work. Anyway, so the pastor is the fourth finger. So your ring finger. He does this by able to teach the flock the word of God, to bring the flock into maturity, being on guard and taking care of the flock and their needs. And often they have many giftings to cover an array of needs in the church. You see, if there's a reason why it's the wedding finger, because he is married to the church. Next one is the teacher, right? They have the supernatural ability to be able to comprehend and share the word with others to build the body. This is the distinct calling because they're under harsher responsibility for distributing knowledge. Right? So here's the interesting part. Is so these, all, these are all separate. And this is why we need the apostle because the apostle touches each one and distributes them and releases them into those giftings that they are called for the church. That's why there's a lot of confusion about what an apostle is today because without this, these will separate. The apostle releases, has the ability and the, the, the authority to release all of these in the, the local church. Then there's the third so we talk, now here comes the motivational gifts. So if we go to verse, uh, where were we? Are we still up on there? Anyway, so the motivational gifts are from the Father. They're gifts of the Spirit still, right? These are the ones that have residency in all of us. Some of these are what, these are what God endows to us when he created us. So you know this. Listen, Romans 12, 4, 8, it says, For just as each one of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we through many, fo many form one body, and each member belongs to the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in according to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If, if it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. And if it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. You see... So there's prophecy, there's serving, there's teaching, sharing, encouragement, which is also exaltation, which is also spurring and stirring another on, right? Giving is the ability to make money and share, right? Leading, right? Not everybody is called to be a pastor, but there's, God calls some to lead others. That's why small groups sometimes Leading is important. And then there's mercy, which is compassionate and caring, being compassionate and caring. Right? You know, each and every believer has been given the indwelling of the Spirit of God. Right? Gifts of the Spirit. So Acts 2.38, that's what it says. Each and every believer has been given the indwelling of the Spirit of God. Gifts of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 8 and 1 Corinthians 12 to 14, we see external gifts of the Holy Spirit. They were not gifts that have been developed by human capacities. Right? Therefore, we have no right to brag. There are gifts given to us. We can't brag on these gifts. You see, 
It is just that. It's a gift that was not yours, but given to you freely. And it's given apart from any inherent capabilities that you have within you. So no believer can say that they have no gift from the Spirit of God. You hear that? No believer can say they have no gift from the Spirit of God. Oh, I have no gifts. No. God has given all believers gifts. Some may have several, but not everyone has all of these gifts. You see, the gifts are given, of the Spirit are given, not for the believer, but for the body of Christ. It's to make the body complete. Each one of you are sitting in a chair right now, right? And some of you guys are at home right now, but... Each one of you is gifted in a way that you fit into a specific place in the church. There's some specific gift that you have that is so important for the church to build the body of church. It fits so uniquely. It's like a cog, a, a gear, a cog that helps another cog, that helps another cog, that creates a whole movement. You see, we forget that. We forget that. And often you see, we see a gift, we get a gift, and we're like, oh man, I don't have that gift. And we get jealous of someone else's gift. Or we get afraid of someone else's gift. But you see, God gave us those gifts, right? And it's like, wow, that person, you know, that person healed somebody the other day, laid hands on somebody, and somebody was healed. Wow, that's amazing. Did you see? This person did. And then all of a sudden, this person, their gift, they edify somebody else by doing this. They didn't even realize they're doing that. They're using your giftings. But you see, we're to earnestly seek the gifts. Because these gifts are intended for the church to edify it, to strengthen it, to feed it, to exhort it, to encourage it. And to have the body of Christ empowered to do the work of Christ. Why do you think the enemy likes telling us we are nothing? If we understand who we are and we move in the power and the gifts that God's given us, what do you think will happen? Right? Jesus gave us, he says that, Peter, you are the rock, and today, right? He says that, and he's like, that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. When we move that way, the gates of hell will not move against us. In fact, we take territory back. Amen? Yeah. And you know, there's, there's, these gifts are always to exalt Christ. To the witness of God's power. Right? To build up the body and to work and enlarge the body of Christ to share the message of the gospel. That's what we're called to do with of Jesus Christ to the lost. That's what every person is called to do. You know, there's, there's ways that the church, maybe you don't even, you don't realize you have spiritual gifts. There's ways that the church has that we can walk through um, with tools to help even look at them. Because... When you don't even realize you have, it's like, wow, I didn't even know I was like that. That kind of explains some things, right? Some people are just so naturally generous, right? But you realize, well, hey, you know, that actually might not be your main gifting. Your gifting might be something else that you've been suppressing because the Holy Spirit's been leading you. And it's like, well, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Right? But there is. The church has those things. And, and we can help equip. Right? 
There's, we need to understand there is no believer in Christ that does not have the gift of the Spirit. Listen, Isaiah 11, 2 and 3, it says, speaks of seven different gifts, spirits or gifts. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance nor make a decision based on hearsay, called discernment. These are important gifts, and, to, and some of them are similar, but different from the gifts of the Spirit that Paul speaks in the New Testament. God gives these gifts as he sees best, and not what we think that they are for. Paul wants it to make it very clear. We should not elevate one gift over another so that we lord over each other. But esteem each and necessary for the completeness of the body of Christ, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 23. So that's the next part of the reading after where we go. Now the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body. Right? It would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, there would, there would the sense of hearing be. Where would it be? Right? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God's placed has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Because if they're all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. So on the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we are to treat them with special honor. The point of all of this is to simply say that God gives the church an amazing variety of spiritual gifts. And they are all tokens of his very grace. First Peter 4.10, it says, each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Each and every church member is clearly part of the body of Christ. Amen? And each one of you is part of it. And God has placed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teacher, well, teachers, right? and then miracles, and the gifts of healing and helping of guidance and different kinds of tongues are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers. Do all work in miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? No. Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Church, I pray that you not only seek and discover your gifts, but that you utilize them to the strengthening of the body of Christ to which you are a part. If you're not, then today is the time to become part of Christ's church because members of this body will live in eternity. Amen. We're not to, don't fear your gifts. In fact, run with your gifts. Run with them. Move in them. Desire them. And then we will be filled with a joy that will be supernatural. Yeah. Remember, it's not for ourselves, it's for the body. Yeah. I just want to close. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you, you give amazing gifts and you give each one of us so uniquely. 
You give us, some of us, you give many gifts. Some of us, you give one gift, but their gift is so loud and so moving, right? And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you that we are all on the same playing field. We're all level. That you give us all of these gifts to edify you, Father, to move in your glory, right? To, to be able to just minister to each other and to others around us. Father, I thank you for them. I pray that you give us an increase in our giftings. I pray for an increase in desire of our giftings. I pray for an increase in the people all around us that we can use our giftings. Father, I just pray that. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus, for ministering all of these gifts. I just thank you, Father, for being present. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being present. I thank you, Jesus, that you built your church and that we are members of that body. I just pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.